So let's take a look at how to customize motion for a picture-in-picture -picture effect in your overlay track. So for this project I have a gradient in the background using a color clip and a lighting filter. So you can see here if I double click on the filter, there it is light, customize, and I made a very simple uh, spotlight to make a gradient effect in the background. So that's my first step. My second step is to drag a clip into the overlay track to be able to add custom motion to it. So I drag this clip into the timeline, into the overlay track. By default it is a picture-in-picture. -picture. So you can see there if I scrub through here, it's a picture-in-picture -picture effect showing video. Now right-click on that clip that you just dragged in. Click on Customize Motion. So here you have your timeline as well with all your transport controls like play and frame forward and end and, and start. And as I drag through here you can see there's the end keyframe designated by the red and there's the beginning keyframe designated by the red. You can create keyframes anywhere along this timeline to be able to add an effect and the effect will transition between those keyframes. So for instance if I scaled my video at the beginning and I scaled it back into the middle and I scaled it full screen at the end those would all be tweened between those keyframes. So right now I'm going to do a little bit of fooling around in terms of uh, 3D. So let's take a look here. I'm on my first keyframe. Now I will use the distortion handles within the clip here to be able to distort my clip. So say for instance I want to distort it this way because I want to have a mirror effect. So I can generally distort it this way, drag it up onto the top. You can see here this little area here allows you to distort it in a proxy mode. So you can see I'm distorting it in a proxy mode. I can also rotate here as well, as well as scale. So you'll notice down in the bottom here, here is my size. It's 50% of the full clip and it's locked. I can unlock it if I like and my position on screen X and Y. You can see that'll change as I drag this around again on my first keyframe. The opacity of the clip so I can change my opacity as well as the rotation parameters here on the X, Y and Z axis. A shadow. So let me turn the shadow on a bit here. So you can see my shadow and let me just blur it up a bit here. So as I scrub through here, you'll notice there's a little bit of a shadow. It's a very, very small hint of a shadow. Let me just change the positioning of this shadow so you get an idea of where it is. And where it casts around. So as I move through this slider, you can see here the shadow is being cast right there. And it's a very discreet shadow. Let me go in and add more blurring to it to give you an idea of blur. So now if I scrub through here, you'll see I have a distorted clip with a shadow. And it's going to the last keyframe which has its own settings. If I want to have the same effect throughout this clip, I just select the keyframe that I want to replicate, right click on that and say copy and paste to all. Now as I transition through here, you'll see there's my shadow. Now in the middle here, arbitrarily, I'm going to add a keyframe. So I'll go position the slider at that point click on the Add Keyframe button and now I can go in here and change the size and for instance rotate it as well. Now if I scrub through here you'll notice that it will tween between these pieces so if I hit play you'll see very gradually and very slowly the clip is rotating and scaling and it will keep doing that until the end you can also move a keyframe. So for instance, I'll take this keyframe and put it very close to the front, making the effect come in a lot faster. There you go. Let's add another keyframe. So in this point here, I want to show a little bit of reflection. So I'll go down into my mirror area. This is a mirror. It will mirror the clip on screen. And I'll give it a little bit of a mirror. You can see here, there's my mirror. Also, the mirror fade out. And this allows you to fade the mirror out, giving you the illusion that it is sort of falling away. And now I'll scrub through here. And there you have it. Very, very simple. Now, if you really like this effect and you want to use it in future projects, you can save it as a path. So let's go to Save To. 
and it'll ask you for the path name. So I'll say PIP Harbor. And I'll save it with all the attributes, the distortions, the shadows, everything like that. And we'll save it to a library called Custom. Say OK. Once I click OK on the dialog, I can use it in this production. You'll see it plays back very, very quickly. Let me just hit play here. And there the clip is rotating. There's a shadow. There's a reflection that's fading away. Now, in my path library, the new icon here in the library area, you'll notice in my custom group, I have now one called Picture in Picture Harbor. And it shows me the effect using a proxy. So the customized motion function allows you to do a lot of work to be able to add effects and add DVEs to your uh, video productions without a lot of uh, complexity and repurpose them for future use in other productions.